Hello everyone and welcome to another video here in the channel. Today I get a short tip, but I think it's a very, very cool thing that everyone who's using ZBrush should know about, which is of course Micromesh. So this is Dor, the dwarf that we use for the substance course, and uh, I decided to give him a little bit of a chainmail cal right here. So if you want to learn how to do this, then you're in the right place. Let's go. So adding chainmail to a character is super, super simple, and uh, today we're going to be using, of course, Dor, the dwarf here to do so. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to clone him so that we can work on a separate um, like subtool and we're not seeing every single other subtool and what we need to do is we need to create a sort of like a mesh that's going to cover the areas where we want the actual chain mail to be and we want to simplify it we don't need all of the details so i'm just going to dynamesh everything here let's not freeze the subdivision levels and there we go. And what we want is we're actually going to be creating a mask extract from the from the whole character. Therefore, the less detail that we have, the better. So what I'm going to do here, I do want the chain mail to go around the ears. So I'm just going to add the volume to create the area where the ears are going to be. We can also use trim dynamic here. As you can see, the chain mail is kind of going to go around on top of the ears. It can press the ears a little bit. So I'm definitely going to remove a little bit of volume here so that we have something that's a little bit more form fitting. And uh, there we go. So that looks a lot, lot better. So once we have this, I'm going to go to the side view and I'm going to grab my mask lasso and I'm going to mask the area where I want the chain mail to be. So I kind of want to have like a very traditional, like, I don't know, I think it's called koi for something like that. So yeah, that looks great right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the extract option on the subtool menu and we're going to extract with zero thickness. Very important. Hit accept. And this is what we're going to get. Very nice, sort of like a clean effect right there. Now, as you can see, we have multiple subgroups that's the inside of the mouth. So I'm gonna auto groups right here, control and click to remove that one and select delete hidden. If you wanna see both sides of the element inside of ZBrush, it's very simple. We just go to display properties over here and we hit the double option. So that way we see the inside and the outside. Once we have this, we need to start cleaning it up. So I'm gonna go geometry, Z remesher, and I'm gonna Z remesh the whole thing. And by doing this, what we're going to be getting is we're going to be getting a uniform distribution of the polygons that occupy sort of like the same area that we want, which is this one right here. I still want to clean things up a little bit, so I'm going to start smoothing things out. So all of this like muscle detail and things that we have from the body, we really don't need it right here. And I'm going to see remesh again. Now it's going to keep the same density. What we want to do now is we want to reduce it a little bit. So I'm going to go half and I'm going to hit see remesh. Okay, so right there. Now on the adaptive size, I'm actually going to bring the adaptive size down because I want most of the elements to be the same size or as close as the same size as possible. And uh, yeah, that looks about right. So, so far what we have is just a very basic like uh, element right there. One of the things that we can do is we can go to the formation and we can inflate this just a tad bit so that it sits on top of the skin, right? It's kind of like extruding the whole thing. There we go. And of course, later on, you can use your, your move brush and all of the other like normal tools that we have inside the ZBrush to uh, get this thing to, to form fit the character a lot better. But I think this one looks, looks cool. It looks a little bit silly right now. Now, the tool that we're going to be using to create the chain mill is called a micro mesh. And that one is inside a dynamic subdiv. We need to turn it on. And by going down here to micro poly on, you're going to be able to select a bunch of different ones. There's actually more that you can get online, uh, such as, for instance, weave. If we want to get like a weave pattern, we can get uh, this one. that's like a cloth pattern. There's a bunch of them. Now, for this one, personally, I'm going to be using this chain mail link, which is a very, very basic one. And there's a couple of things that you need to take into account for this particular piece. The first one is that you do want to keep the weld option selected so that the links, when they touch each other, they actually weld into a single piece it's not going to happen everywhere you can see that right now for instance there's a couple of things that are a little bit asymmetrical especially where the topology is not flowing perfectly because this is just zero mesh right uh you might get a little bit of an issue now one thing that you can do though is you can align them which are going to try to align them to the to the actual flow of the topology you can rotate on z for instance here i feel like this one looks a little bit better you can rotate on x as well i think rotation on z um actually was working quite nice there we go so Something like this was looking nice. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now, as you can see here towards the ear section, things are getting a little bit more stretched. And the reason why that is happening is because this is dependent on each of the faces of this thing right here of our, of our main mesh. So if the topology of your mesh is very stretched, very like intense in certain areas, that will be seen on this dynamic subdiv. 
However, if you're doing something like 3D print or something like that, usually these kind of details are not that much of a deal. Um, another thing we could do here, for instance, is let's turn this off. Let's isolate it for just a second. And we could, for instance, smooth this out a little bit more, right, on both sides. So now when we turn on Dynamics of Dev, as you can see, the chainmail is going to look way, way nicer because there's not as much stretch on the faces themselves. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Now, be very careful with this. Right now, this is Dynamics of this, so this is just like a preview. What I'm gonna do before that, because I'm actually gonna use this thing for one more thing. I'm gonna go to Geometry, and I'm gonna duplicate this, or Subtool, and uh, duplicate this one. There we go. So on this first one, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go to Geometry, Dynamics of Diff, and I'm gonna hit Apply. Now, all of those links exist as real geometry. We jump from 4,000 points to 1.3 million points because all of those rings are now part of the world. So you can literally export this into a, again, like a 3D printer or something. You can smooth this out like control D and everything is gonna be smoothed out. And this is actual geometry that has been applied to our object. So keep that in mind. When you apply the micro mesh, if you wanna take this into another software, we can bake this for instance with transparency instead of uh, like substance painter it will now be permanent geometry. So what I wanna do, because one thing that I don't like about Chainmail is that it leaves these very weird borders. As you can see, there's like disconnected links right there. So I'm gonna go back to, to the other piece, uh, this one right here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dynamic solo. I am gonna do a little bit of C modeler. So I'm gonna go C modeler. I want to do a poly group of this border right here. There we go. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty much the whole border. And I wanna poly group this one right there there we go so let's isolate that border and then with my select lasso i'm just going to delete all of the faces that i don't need right now i'm not deleting i'm just hiding right all of these things we cover on the um, basic seaverse course by the way guys the stylized character creation course so there we go something like that and i'm going to see delete hidden this point right there i don't love it's not again horrible but i don't love it so what we can do here is I'm going to delete this poly and that one. And then I'm going to go to point and this move points. There we go. Actually, let's delete that poly as well. And let's just bridge here. We're going to bridge from here to here. Perfect. We can poly group again or auto group. So that it's the same poly group. Awesome. And now what we have is a little bit of a border right there. Again, going into, into C modeler. I can select this one and instead of delete poly, I'm going to Q mesh, poly group all, it's like an extrusion. I'm going to extrude this up and then I'm going to do this. I'm just going to give it a little bit more thickness right there and probably extrude it. Actually, let's do a little bit up and let me isolate it because it's a little bit difficult to hit that one. A little bit in. There we go. So that generates like a little bit of a border for my whole uh, chain mill. And that's pretty much it. Now we can go, for instance, to bevel. Let's do four rows. So it's very straight. We can bevel that one right there. Oh, that's a little bit too much. So just very, very lightly. Or you know what? Let's do another Q mesh. There we go. And now we can bevel a little bit more comfortably. And that's it. There we go. So now Door the Dwarf has a very nice chain mill here. Now what we can do is we can delete this one. Hit OK. We're just going to be left with this thing right here. Let's go back to our original mesh and I'm going to say append. I'm going to append the chain mill and then I go back here, select the new one, go back to the character, append and append a little extract so that it like uh, covers the whole border. Now here with the ear, to be honest, what I would probably do if this was like a game character, I would just delete the ear. But to keep it uh, simple, I'm just going to push it in inside the, the chain mill. So I know this like definitely changes the way the, the silhouette of the character looks, right? Like we're, we're destroying the, the skull right there. But for just like a, an exercise purpose, I think it's fine. So there we go. Perfect. Now we can bring him all the way to the top for the whole detail. And there you go. We've just given Door the Dwarf a little bit of an upgrade here. And if he wants to go to battle being a little bit more ready, well, 
here we go. Of course, we can sculpt more, like, little details on the leather. We can add stitches and things like that. But that's it, guys. Just a short video showing you Micromesh. Really, really powerful tool, especially for chainmail. But you can use it for a bunch of different things. If you didn't have any of this in your arsenal, well, now you do. And if you want to learn more about the 3D world, as well as ZBrush and all of the other softwares, make sure to check our page, our website. Also, if you want to support the channel, best way you can do it. Like, share, subscribe. That's the stuff. That's the stuff that we need here in socials to grow. It's not that I love doing it, guys, but, you know, it's part of the deal. So thank you very much, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.